Hello, I'm Trey Duke, and welcome to episode two of Take 20. Miss Johnson, can you believe they asked us to come back for our second episode? I know, our first episode was a huge success. They can't get rid of us now. <laughs> hey, Mr. Duke, did you ever imagine that we'd have our own television show in Murfreesboro City Schools? You know, Miss Johnson, I've imagined a lot of things, but I have never imagined this. And that's what this month's episode is all about, imagination. Everything from crazy creation to dinosaurs. Now this sounds exciting and we are visiting three of our schools on this episode. And what better way to use our imagination than music? So let's head over to Irma Siegel and see what they're up to. Dr. Duke, I really think you're going to enjoy this. I'm student reporter Elizabeth Dixon here at my school, Irma Siegel Elementary. I'm here today with Mr. Hale, the music teacher. Mr. Hale, so what are we going to be doing today? Well, we're going to be showing you and the people at home how to make a drum from some of some household items that they might have. A drum? With items from the house? This sounds exciting. Let's get started. We're going to use a cereal box. This one still has a little cereal in it. We're going to have a metal lid to a pot, some aluminum foil, and two spatulas. And we are going to create a backbeat. All right, so here's how you make the drum. You got your aluminum foil here. We're going to rip that off. We're going to place it on top of our snare drum, which is our cereal box. Place it here. We're going to kind of cover the edges. And you can tuck it underneath like so. And now we've got our snare drum and we've got our hi-hat, which are the two components of the backbeat. What's a backbeat? The backbeat emphasizes uh, the two and the four. So we're going to like do a two and a four here. We're going to go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Our hi-hat is going to play on every beat like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. and if I put them together, it's going to sound like this. One and Like that. All right, Elizabeth, are you ready to make your own? Yes, sir. All right. So let's think about something that you really care about. Do you have a pet? Yes, sir. I have a dog. You have a dog? All right, cool. So you got a dog. Tell me about this dog. Is your dog wild? Is he calm? He's kind of lazy. Lazy? All right. So lazy. My dog is lazy. Dog is lazy. All right. So something that has to rhyme with lazy, what would that be? Uh, crazy. There you go, crazy. So my dog is lazy, he's crazy. Okay, so let's think about this. We gotta have the beat, we gotta go. I have a dog and he is lazy. You like that? Yeah. All right, cool. I have a dog and he is crazy. All right? Now that's two lines of our rhyme, all right? Tell me something a little bit more about this dog. Does this dog make you happy or sad, mad? What, what, does this dog, you like him? I like him. You like him? Yes. All right. So does he like to lick your face? Yes, sir. And so has he licked you and made you feel better? Yes, sir. Cool. So the dog makes you feel better, okay. So like maybe when you're sad, he can make you what? Happy. Happy. What's another word for happy that would rhyme with sad? Glad? Yeah. All right, so when you're sad, he makes you glad. Okay, so when I'm sad, he makes me glad. Ooh, that's a good one. All right, now we get down to our last line. We gotta do four lines. Let's do, that's my dog. He's what? Amazing. Yes. Right, so I have a dog and he's amazing. All right, so we got the whole thing here. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Here we go. I have a dog and he is lazy. I have a dog and he is crazy. And when I'm sad, he makes me glad. That's my dog. He's amazing. You like that? Yes, sir. Cool. One, two, three, four. I have a dog and he is lazy. I have a dog and he is crazy. And when I'm sad, he makes me glad. I have a dog and he's amazing. Good job, Elizabeth. That was great. You are a natural. This has been so much fun. Thank you for teaching me how to do a backbeat, Mr. Hale. It has been a pleasure. 
And if anyone else out there at home makes their own beats, please make sure you send it to us. Once again, I'm student reporter Elizabeth here at Irma Siegel with Mr. Hale, creating all kinds of new tunes. Miss Johnson, I'll send it back to you. Thanks, Elizabeth. That was so entertaining. I can see why Mr. Hale was one of our district's teachers of the year. Mr. Duke, have you ever written your own song? I've never written my own song, but after all the years I've spent in schools, I've written lots of stories and lots of poems. Your own story? That's what Miss Kathy and Miss Sherry will be showing us how to do today. Use your own imagination to create a story. Let's look over to the studios. Thank you, Miss Johnson. I am so excited to have Miss Kathy with me today. I am so excited to be here. And I hear you have a different kind of book for me today. I do. This is a wordless picture book that we're going to be talking about today. And the beauty of a wordless picture book, it does lots of things for me. Like it helps grow my vocabulary. I can use something called $10 words. Mm, sounds expensive. It It is, but it makes us look so smart. And it also helps me with comprehension. It helps me to pay attention to details in a book. But even better, it makes me a better writer and a better understander. So we get to make up our own story today using our own $10 words. Well, I am very excited. Let's jump in and see oh, what's happening. Absolutely. Now, I see three characters here. So, the, hmm, who do we want to name as our characters? Well, you know, I like the name Rhonda. Oh, I do too. And I see a little girl, so let's name one Rhonda. And what about Kimberly? That's oh, I sweet. like that name too. And there's a boy. Well, what about Ralph? Ralph's a good name. Let's go with boy. Ralph. So, those are the characters in our story. And you know how I talk to you about those $10 words. So, what I want to make certain that we do is to use some $10 words when we tell our story. So, one of our $10 words for this page is dreary. Could we say something using the word dreary? It looks like it's a dreary day because it's raining, Miss Kathy. You are exactly right. So dreary, what a dreary day it was. And oh, it looks like Ralph has found a bag. I wonder mm -hmm. what, maybe we could say mysterious. Could we use mysterious in the story? I like that word mysterious. You never know what you're going to get with mysterious. Oh, absolutely. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. So in this story, it looks like Kimberly has found a piece of chalk. And it's yellow piece of chalk and she is drawing. Oh, she is drawing. So let's see what Kimberly is going to draw. Oh, now Miss Kathy, I noticed something here. What? It looks like whatever she draws, it comes to life. You're exactly right. It looks as if she's using maybe some magical chalk. You think that's what could be happening? I'd like to find some magical chalk, wouldn't you? Let's see. Oh, you know what? I'm thinking of a fancy $10 word. You ready? I'm ready. I think the fancy $10 word could be shimmering. The shimmering. The clouds are shimmering in the sunlight after she has drawn the sun. Whoa, this page makes me want to put on my sunglasses. Oh, I think we need oh. to. <gasps> oh, oh, my mm. goodness. This looks like, hmm, looks like she's drawing what might be, <gasps> oh my goodness, there's butterflies. That looks wondrous. And the same, it? wondrous. Yes, wondrous. wondrous. Mm. Let's see what wondrous mm. can really <gasps> look like. They came oh. to life, Miss Kathy. Look how excited she is in this oh. story. And look at Ralph. He's just looking at amazed. He is amazed. I like that $10, $10 word. Too. I think it's a $10. Oh, I have a $10 word for us Give now. Me you one. ready? I'm ready. This $10 word has to do with Ralph's expression on his face. It looks to me like Ralph is mischievous. Yes, he definitely looks mischievous to me. I wonder what Ralph is drawing in his picture here. You know, it looks to me like he may be drawing a dinosaur. <gasps> and you know, from the previous pictures, when they draw something, oh, Miss Kathy, you know what happens. It comes alive. Let's check. Let's see. see what Let's see. <gasps> oh, they are looking terrified. They are. And look at that sweet Kimberly. She's got her little hands covering her face. So I'm wondering what's going to happen next. 
You know, Miss Kathy, students can check this book out at their school library or at their local library to find out what the ending is. That's a great idea, Miss Sherry. I think students will love writing their own story and using their own $10 words. You know, Miss Kathy, I have a surprise for us today. Look what I have. You're going to love it. I can't wait. <gasps> so that we can draw our own ending you to know, the book. That's an exciting idea. I'm thinking I'm going to draw a beach house in Florida. A beach house? That sounds fabulous. I think I'll join you and forget the dinosaurs. Miss Kathy, thanks so much for joining me today, and cheers to our beach house. Thank you. It was a great time. I had a wonderful time. But for now, let's toss it over to our fabulous art teachers and see what they have as their ending for the story. Woo, great throw, Sherry. Hi, I'm Dee Dee Potter. I'm the art teacher at Hopgood Elementary. And today I'm with Sasha Burnett, the art teacher here at John Pittard Elementary. And we are going to close out and get creative with the book they just read called Chalk. Are you ready to get creative? I am, I'm ready. I also brought along one of my students, Ben, to draw with us. Hey, Ben. Hello, Ben, are you ready? Yes. Are you excited? Yes. It'll be a lot of fun. Boys and girls, go and get your chalk and come outside with us and draw a picture. All right, guys, we've got our chalk. Let's get started. We are going to start drawing our dinosaur. Ben, what does the word dinosaur start with? What letter? D. A D. You're exactly right. So we're going to draw a horizontal line. And then we're going to draw a large letter U. And we've got a capital D. It's just turned a different way. Now, let's draw the neck of our dinosaur. We're gonna draw a triangle. So I'm gonna put my chalk right here. Then go up and down. Awesome job. Now, let's draw the tail of our dinosaur. I'm gonna put my chalk right here at the other end of my letter D. And I'm gonna draw a curved line going out. Let's come down here. And I'm going to draw another curved line that's going to meet the first curved line I drew. This is my dinosaur's tail. Now, let's do rectangles for our legs. We're going to do four. At the bottom of this curved line here, I'm going to draw one, two. You can draw with me, Ben. Awesome job. Three and four. Now, let's draw an oval for his head. Are you ready? At the top of my triangle here, I'm gonna draw an oval. Draw an oval. Awesome job, I like that bright blue. Let's give him a circle for his eye. Let's draw a curved line here because we want our dinosaur to smile. Now we can draw zigzags on the back of our triangle here to give him some spikes. And I'm going to continue here. Awesome job, Ben. Do you want to keep going? Maybe on his tail. And we have drawn a dinosaur. I love it. You did such an awesome job, Ben. Oh, that was so much fun. I really enjoyed those drawing those dinosaurs yes. over there. Yes. Let's take a look at how we've used our imagination earlier to draw some dinosaurs. Yes. So this is how I decided to finish my story thinking about the story chalk. So I have my dinosaur using the same techniques that we used with Ben in the grass on a sunny bright day and he is watering the flowers because April showers bring May, May flowers. flowers. So that's how I completed my story. That's beautiful. Thank you. All right, Ben, are you ready to see how I finish my story? Yes. Okay, so check it out. In mine, all the kids are using the what? The dinosaur. As a slide. You think that would be a fun idea? Yeah. I do too. Long slide. It would be. All right, Ben, that's how I finished my story. What do you think? It was very good. Awesome. All right. Thank you, Alex, for this wonderful idea. And now back to the control room.
Between a great book and a great art project, that makes me want to get outside with my own family to create our own story with sidewalk chalk. Now, I don't think our chalk will come to life, but it would make the driveway look a whole lot cooler. Hey, maybe the neighborhood kids would like it too. If my drawings came to life, I'd be afraid of how they would look. I tend to think and draw outside of the lines. So Mr. Duke, I'm going to give you a few hints of someone else oh. who thought and drew outside the lines. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. He was a cartoonist. He was an inventor. And he never took the easy way out for a simple solution. Uh, let me see. Was it Rube Goldberg? You got it. Perfect. Well, that takes us right back to Irma Siegel, where Elizabeth is waiting for us in the STEAM lab. I'm here today with Mr. Kelly and Ms. Gretchen. Ms. Gretchen, what's the concept of a Rube Goldberg? Rube Goldberg was a famous cartoonist, and he made really hilarious pictures, but the cool thing about it was that he was also an engineer. And so because he was an engineer, he drew these pictures of someone doing a simple task, but making it really difficult. An important skill that Rube Goldberg and other engineers have to have is the skill to evaluate. That means they need to look at the project that they're making to make sure that it's doing what they need it to do. Now, we've already started making a Rube Goldberg. Miss Gretchen, would you like to tell everyone what we would like our Rube Goldberg to do? Absolutely. We are going to build a machine that dispenses hand sanitizer. Are you ready to get started, Mr. Kelly? Absolutely. Let's show them what we've got so far. We're going to start right here at the top with this toy car and let it go down the track until it hits this slinky. The slinky will make the inclined plane move down, which will push the car all the way down to the weight over here, which pushes the wedge all the way over to the golf ball, which will push the golf ball all the way down to the pool ball and bump the gear. The gear is going to hit the balance board, which will push the golf ball right into the shovel, dispensing the hand sanitizer into the bucket. Now remember, Rube Goldbergs are simple tasks but are made more challenging. So if this does not work, this is that perfect time to use that engineering skill, evaluate what's going wrong, and then fixing that problem. You guys ready? Let's see how it goes. Elizabeth, as you can see, it takes perseverance and grit to create an engineering design project. Thanks for having me. I've had so much fun. Let's toss back to the control center so we can keep adding to our design. Did you notice that that Rube Goldberg experiment was a little perplexing? I know. They are so much fun, but so challenging to create. <laughs> you did it again, Miss Johnson. You used two words to take us right to our next segment. Dylan is at Salem with our PE teachers who have created challenging games fun for all ages, including the ages of our Salem PE teachers. Thanks, Dr. Duke. Salem sure is missing seeing you in the classroom. Today, I'm inside with PE teachers Mr. Wood and Mr. Piercy. Grayson, you ready to play some games? Yes, I am. It sure looks like they're having a lot of fun back there. Let's go see what they're up to. Hey, MCS families, we have a fun activity today that you can use any equipment that you have at home to play. It's called the Tic-Tac-Toe Challenge. So, let's go over how you can play this at home with your family. You'll have two teams, as many players as you want, and you're going to get any items that you have at home. We have shirts, different colored shirts, so that we can tell each team apart. What will happen is one player at a time will run out, and they will drop a shirt inside the grid. Then the next player goes, and then the next player goes. If one team is able to get three in a row, then they would win the round. But this is where it gets tricky. Once you've used all three items, for your next turn, you have to move one of your items to a new spot. Then we should have a winner for our first round. So who's ready to play the Tic-Tac-Toe Challenge? Let's go! <laughs> that tic-tac-toe game was awesome. 
It looks like you have another activity to show us. We do, it's a push-up challenge. Let me show you how to do it. You're gonna have eight cups set in a row. As you're gonna do a push-up and then stack one cup on top of another one. Do another push-up, stack it on tops. So you'll finish doing eight cups and eight push-ups. It's a timed event, see if you could beat me. All right, friends, for this push-up challenge, if you have difficulty doing just a regular push-up, feel free to drop your knees and do a modified push-up. See if you can beat me. Here we go. I'm stacking it eight times. Ready? Go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. Good luck, guys. See if you can beat me. Got one more challenge for you guys. I'm gonna challenge Dylan, Grayson, and Mr. Piercy. So I'm gonna stack five cups in a row and they're gonna jump over them. After they've each jumped them, I'm gonna add five more and we're gonna see how many cups that they could each jump. All right, Dylan, you're first. Here we go. Grayson. Mr. Piercy. All right, let's add five more. A little bit longer. Here we go. Good. You guys think you can clear 15? All right, let's see what happens. Here we go. Good. Good job, Grayson. All right. All right, go for 35. Bam! That's what I'm talking about. Boom! Great job to Mr. Piercy for clearing 35 cups. That was absolutely amazing. We're challenging you guys to see if you could beat him. Send in videos. We'd love to see those of you guys trying to beat him. Also, the push-up challenge. See if you could beat me at the time for that. We hope you guys enjoyed that. Have a great day. Grayson, that was a lot of fun. Thanks for coming out here with me. Yeah, I enjoyed that a lot. Dr. Duke, we have some more games to play, but back to you. That looked like so much fun. Thanks, Dylan, and thanks to all of our student reporters. You know, 20 minutes goes quick, and it was so much fun to visit our schools and our studios. So thank you for joining us for another episode of Take 20, and thank you to all of our teachers and staff who work so hard every day to make sure all the kids in Murfreesboro City are known, safe, challenged, and empowered. Have a great day, everyone. <laughs>